Hello. Today we'll learn how to use the new no-code provisioning feature in Terraform Cloud to give our users a seamless self-service experience without requiring any prior Terraform knowledge. It all starts here in the private registry where a module author can publish modules and enable them for no-code provisioning. This would typically be done by a member of a platform engineering team or a similar group that's responsible for standardizing your cloud infrastructure. So here in our private registry in the modules section, we can either enable an existing module for no-code provisioning or publish a new one. To enable an existing module, we just open up the modules entry here, go over to the manage module for organization menu and enable for no-code provisioning. To publish a new module, we follow the same basic process as publishing a standard module to the private registry. Uh, here again in our module section, we click on publish and module. We'll go ahead and connect to one of our supported version control providers. In this case, I'm going to connect out to GitHub. And I'll select this Azure web server no code module I've prepared. Note the new section here where we can mark this as a no-code provisioning enabled module. When we enable this setting, we get some notes here about the requirements for a no-code module and also a link to the documentation where we can learn more. The first difference noted here is that modules must have provider configuration defined in their HCL. Typically, a submodule would inherit provider configuration from its calling root module, uh, but in this case, the no-code module effectively is our root module, so it's going to need that provider configuration. The second thing we need for a successful no-code provisioning is provider credentials. We need to make these available so that the first run will succeed when a user provisions a workspace from this module. Uh, this can be done in a few ways. For example, you can have static credentials defined in a variable set that's applied to all workspaces so that it is automatically inherited by the new workspace. Or if you use HashiCorp Vault in your environment, your no-code module could be set up to use the Vault provider to fetch dynamic cloud credentials uh, using the secrets engines that you probably already have set up. A third option would be to simply let the first run of the workspace fail and add the provider credentials as variables after the fact, and then kick off another run. So let's go ahead and publish this module. Terraform Cloud is going to pull it down from GitHub, and it'll create versions for the module based on the Git tags on the source repo, just like for any other private module that we would publish to the registry. And there we go. Our no-code module is ready. We have all of our versions available pulled down from GitHub, any documentation we included in a readme, and also the information about our input variables and outputs. And the new bit is we have this provision workspace button. Let's switch roles now here to a consumer's point of view. A user would come into our organization's private registry where we have a new option to filter for no-code ready modules. So I'll filter down for those modules and I'll look for Azure-based modules here. And we see our new no-code Azure web server that I just published. And to deploy this module, all I need to do is click on Provision Workspace. I'll be prompted for any required variables. Uh, these are variables in the module that don't have default values assigned. So in this case, we just need a unique prefix and an environment tag. We then give our workspace a unique name within our organization. So I'll call this no code demo web server. We can optionally give it a description and then choose our apply method. And for no code modules, we default this to auto apply uh, just to streamline that process. And we'll go ahead and create. What we wind up with is a Terraform Cloud workspace, which is now planning and applying the infrastructure defined in our no code module. 
And as an end user, I didn't have to write a single line of Terraform code. Now I mentioned before that we need to supply provider credentials to the new workspace. Uh, and in this case, our administrators have provided a variable set with some default Azure credentials to enable the no-code workflow. And because it's been applied to all workspaces, it was automatically available so that our first run could execute successfully. While we're here on the variables, we can see we can also add any additional variables if we want to maybe change some of the default behavior of this no-code module. We could go ahead and add those here and kick off another run to change anything that the module author has exposed through those variables. Uh, but initially, we'll just see those two required variables that we had to supply. Back on the workspace overview, we see that our first run has successfully provisioned and we have our outputs along with a functional website. So to wrap up, we learned how to publish a no-code module to the Terraform Cloud private registry, and we saw how easy it is to provision a new workspace and some infrastructure using this new workflow. To find out more information about no-code provisioning, check out the Terraform Cloud documentation and tutorials at developer.hashicorp.com and head over to cloud.hashicorp.com to get started for free. Thanks for watching.